Hello there, my friends. This is Lindy, and welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. So, this is my third month on BookTube, and at the start of March, I had this really ambitious TBR because of all of the different readathons and group reads and stuff like that happening. So, I thought that I would look back on the month and see how that went. Uh, I do have in real life uh, book clubs. I have three book clubs. So in addition to my, um, uh, my YA book club and my feminist book club and my lesbian plus book club, I did a buddy read with a in real life friend, although she lives in Vancouver. So we buddy read with regular check-ins over the phone. And that book that we buddy read was Long Live the Post Horn by Vig Disroth, um, translated by Charlotte Barst Barstand, Barstand, something like that. Anyway, uh, I've been doing the group reads with the Book Naturalist Club and this month there were two books, Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. And I'd actually read that back in August 2020 when I looked back on my notes on that book. I actually listened to the audiobook twice through. I really, really liked it a lot. That was a five star listen for me. Um, and then the other book for March was uh, Spineless by Julie Burwald. And again, I had the audiobook, but this time it just didn't work for me. I listened to a couple of chapters and I decided that maybe if I was in a different mood it might work, but I did not finish that one. And the other group read that I did was with the LGBTQ in translation uh, that Jen the Librarian is hosting and now Greg of Supposedly Fun is also co-hosting but for the February March the book was The Membranes by Chi Tawei and it's translated by Ari Larissa Heinrich and we had discussion on um, Discord so we even figured out how to do that <laughs> and uh, yeah that was great and then for the readathons, oh, there were so many of them. Middle grade March. So what I had planned for middle grade March, um, I, I was looking at their prompts. They had five prompts, book with five or more words in the title. And so I chose all 13, The Incredible Cave Rescue of the Thai Boy Soccer Team by Christina Suntornvat. And then I suggested that my YA book club um, discuss that one. Um, and they went for it and everybody loved it. So, check. Um, second prompt was featuring an orphan main character. And I had been wanting to read Robber Girl by Franny Billingsley. Read it. Loved it. Uh, prompt number three was a contemporary book and I didn't have that one for a prompt. Although next month uh, I'm planning to read um, planning to read all of the titles on the Lambda Literary Award LGBTQ children's and middle to grade uh, finalists and one of those is a contemporary middle grade and that's called Hazel Bly in the Deep Blue Sea by Ashley Herring Blake. So middle grade March is going to carry on into April for that prompt. Prompt number four, a book set in Asia and I plan to read Temple Alley Summer by um, translated by Avery Udagawa. The author is Sachiko Kashiwaba and uh, oh, it's right here. Uh, Actually, this one is a contemporary. Hmm. I could count it for that, but I, I 
I counted it for a book set in Asia. And I really enjoyed that too. And a book that is older than you. So what I did was I went to the Newbery Medal Awards list and I looked for books that won awards prior to 1960. And I found um, Kate Charity's The White Stag. And I remembered having read this when I was in elementary school. Um, except that when I got it in from the library, it wasn't what I remembered. It's very, very skinny. And it's actually um, kind of a uh, fairy tale kind of retelling. I did read it, but what I was remembering were a couple of other books by Kate Charity that are, you know, more like about 200 or 250 pages. And that um, the titles are The Good Master and The Singing Tree. Uh, anyway, The White Stag was published in 1937, and I read about the first third of the 100 pages, and I decided that was enough. Um, it's, it's got beautiful illustrations by the author, but um, <laughs> it reads like a, uh, an Old Testament story, uh, although in this case it's a, a pagan story, is what it, how it's explained at the beginning. And in the opening scene, um, the leader of this tribe of Huns, and the origins of the Hungarians, so Huns and, and Magyars, uh, they're, they've got nothing to eat, and he's, they're traveling west, and he wants to sacrifice to the gods, and the only thing he's got to sacrifice is his favorite horse. So he gives it a good club on the head and kills it. And I thought, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I actually kind of remember that as a kid. But anyway, uh, I, I mean, I remember that as part of the book, not that I ever clubbed a horse on the head. You know what I mean. Anyway, I did read another middle grade novel, um, The Last Quintista by Donna Barba Higuera. That one's science fiction. And I picked up Rumaisa, a fairy tale by Radia Hafiza. Um, this one I think I saw it on a short list for an award, and it is kind of like a Muslim retelling of three different fairy tales, uh, Rapunzel, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty. And I read the first one, and I thought that's enough. I didn't finish it. I wasn't finding it that engaging. Um, so. All in all, I thought I had a great middle grade March. And Jack of Spread Book Joy has done a pair of videos about um, why adults read children's books. And they are just excellent. She has guests um, from other YouTube's, <laughs> other YouTube uh guests and um yeah it's just wonderful wonderful highly recommend it i will leave links and the there were a number of booktubers that were uh hosting this middle grade march um amanda at curly reader is one of them next readathon do-a-thon and that one actually is um, through a blog, Paula Bardell Hetty's Book Jotter blog. And um, I know about it because of Sean the Book Maniac's um, channel. And so I plan to read Cove by Kynan Jones, and that was actually a gift from Sean, and also The Mabinogian. 12th century uh, 
traditional stories from Wales. And I really enjoyed Cove. And I only got through the first hour out of 11 of the Mabinogion. I just got sidetracked, but I do plan to go back to that. Maybe before next March I'll have it finished. <laughs> there was also the Irish Readathon. Uh, Eva at Words of Clover, I think, was one of the people hosting this. Anyway, I plan to read a short story by Edna O'Brien called Christmas Roses. And I did. I read it on St. Patrick's Day. I participated in the Irish Readathon. March Mystery Madness. I don't read a lot of mysteries, but I thought I have. Uh, oh, and they had a two by two as their theme this year for 2022. So I've got the second book in a series by an Edmonton author, Candace Jane Dorsey. This one is called What's the Matter with Mary Jane? Um, and it's the adventures of Isabel, who is a pansexual uh, detective, kind of, this is described as gender and genre bending, this series. Um, very postmodern, lots of puns. I didn't get to it. However, I read two other mysteries. I picked up Elena Knows by Claudia Pinero, translated by Francis Riddle, because it was on the International Booker list. I really enjoyed it. And I picked up By Way of Sorrow by a trans author, Robin Geigel, and it's about a trans um, lawyer. And I really like that too. That one was recommended to me by a friend in one of my book clubs. So, good job on that. I also participated in March of the Mammoths, and that's Jason of Old Blue's chapter and verse, and Lucas and Alex. I decided that I was going to read the books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczyk. It's translated by Jennifer Croft, and I loved it so much. <laughs> so thank you, hashtag March of the Mammoths people, because, yeah. Uh, on Litzy, there's the Chunkster Challenge this year, so I also counted it for Chunkster Challenge. And there was Coridathon. Uh, that was one week in March, the 7th to the 13th hosted by Monica Kim and Chloe of Books with Chloe. I really love doing that because um, focusing on one country for one week, um, I read picture books, I read uh, memoir, I read biography, graphic novel format, um, a novel, and uh, oh, and a cookbook, and I did some Korean cooking as well, and I, I made a video about that, so I will include a link um, in the description down below. And one last one was Her Story-a-thon um, for Women's History Month. So I made a video on International Women's Day, and I talked about a whole bunch of books that I read, especially for Women's History Month. I had planned to read four, I see here on my TBR, and I ended up reading way more than that because it was a whole bunch of picture book biography as well as a full-length adult biography that was of a um, little-known Canadian painter, Mary Heister Reed. Um, Oh yeah, I had a good time with that too. So, I don't know about April. There's some um, Aussie April. 
And there's a some kind of a linguathon that I noticed. I don't know if it's books in translation, books about language, something like that. Not sure if I'm going to participate in that, although I know that I'm going to be reading books in translation because I always do. So anyway, I would say that uh, readathon participation was a big success for me. I really enjoyed it. So thank you to the many booktubers who are hosting these things because it's fun. It's great. And thank you to everybody who's watching this and thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thanks for all your comments. I want to know what other readathons and group reads and stuff like that are happening in April. So please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's lots to explore there. And yeah, I'm Frida will say hi. No, she doesn't want to say hi. <laughs> Bye everybody.